So Patricia Hughes or Trish Hughes, uh, welcome to Striker Online. Thanks a million for coming on. Um, we're talk we want to talk about scholarships and the whole um, system over in the United States, of which you are very well aware of. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved and and uh, basically introduce yourself to our community? Sure. Thanks, Alex. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Trish Hughes. I'm originally from Walkinstown in Dublin. Um, grew up playing soccer in the Dublin area and um, had certainly had some early uh, involvement with the, with the women's national team. And at about 18, 19 years of age, um, I had had a, a couple of teammates who had gone over to the US and the whole notion of a scholarship became um, something that I, I heard about, learned about. And then out, out of nowhere, I got an opportunity to get a full scholarship to a school in South Carolina. Um, at the time, I was very young and naive. I didn't even know where South Carolina was on the map, but nonetheless found myself in a small town in Hartsville, South Carolina, um, where I spent my four years and, and played and, and went on to, to get a, a college degree and then certainly had an unbelievable playing experience there. Um, and that really just became a, a launch pad for me to go on then and pursue a master's degree um, as a graduate assistant coaching. Um, and then really the rest is history. I've just kind of transitioned up through the ranks with, um, spent about 25 years coaching college um, and then got a real taste for athletic administration and um, decided to walk away from the field to go into, uh, I guess you'd call it background management, but I was working with the entire athletic department and 23 other sports. And then from there, um, became a director of athletics at another institution. I've moved around quite a bit, to be very honest with you. And now I'm based in Charlotte, North Carolina. In my current role, I'm the director of college programs at United Soccer Coaches. So if you think about the LMA, which is the League Managers Association in England, that provides a membership organization for resource and education for all coaches at every level of the game in, in, in England. That's pretty much the, the, the type of association that I'm involved in. But I work directly with college coaches across the country in all three, in all of the divisions, really. So that's that's kind of currently what I'm doing right now. And is that like men and women across the two? All men, men and women, yep. So I work as a liaison. Um, I do legislative consulting work with our governing body, which would be the NCAA or the NJCAA. Um, if you think about FIFA being the governing body of, of world soccer in the US, in the collegiate landscape anyway, we have governing bodies that we have to adhere to their um, membership protocols and, and criteria. Um, I do legislative work in terms of if we're trying to advance rules or other initiatives such as climatization, periodization, different things that would impact the schedule. Um, and then I work as an advocate and an ally on behalf of college coaches with coach education, uh, if they need legal support, if we are working in and around um, recruiting roles. So obviously uh, the, one of the primary roles of any college coach is recruitment and retention, creating pathways for education. So I work very hands-on with coaches in, in, in all different levels of the game. So I would be quite familiar with the landscape and, and certainly my lens, both as a player having come from over in Ireland and then certainly as a, a college coach and an administrator, it was one of the reasons I kind of entered into the space because I, my lens is quite diversified in terms of understanding the player pathway, the coach pathway, player coach relationships, and then obviously administratively how that all falls in under the various organizations and the mission that you serve when you represent either an institution or certainly a league and member association. So my experience is, is quite diverse um, but I think it really helps me have a great understanding of the landscape so, and really player pathways so yeah that's right so um, I, I mean I tend to stay on the periphery of I call it outside the flags and um, I'm not necessarily involved in um, you know coaching curriculum or we certainly as an organization we have a coach education licensure um, that would give you a pathway on up if you wanted to get your pro license but I, I stay in a different education space. Mine is outside the flags. It's um, coach wellness, student athlete well-being, and the relationship. And you know, obviously, the the player coach relationship is there's a, there's a seismic shift right now, right, in terms of the culture that needs to exist within programs to be able to push players to to compete and excel as players and as humans. Um, the days of of players being subjected to uh, abusive sideline 
behavior is it's just a thing of the past, right? So I think the expectations and rights of players, the expectations and goals of coaches and finding a way to, to pair that so that the student athlete or the player experience is at all times front and center. Um, and then obviously coaches have to answer to administration in terms of how the, the parameters and the guidelines and the values with which they run their program. So I, I kind of have a lens and a, a front door access into all of these levels. Um, I see the good, the bad and the ugly and then, and then the amazing. I see players in the power five and programs that are excelling at the highest level, which would be feeder programs for the US women's national team and other national teams around the world. But then I also see these amazing playing environments at the division two, which would be the second tier or even division three, where there are programs who are doing it at a really, really high level, creating an awesome culture and a playing experience. And then ultimately, let's not forget about the, the pathway to graduation, right? I mean, in, in the US, within this collegiate environment, um, if you're not success, uh, succeeding or excelling academically, your playing rights and privileges get taken away from you because there are academic standards with which you have to adhere. So there are wonderful programs. There are great footballing programs. And then there are really high level academic schools. And I think finding a fit that fits any student, male or female, is what's really, really important to me. Um, and avoiding the pitfalls, as we say, of going into an environment. You could have a great soccer program that's in a, an environment that just will not suit a certain kind of, of, of young person. So, um, and certainly my lens has given me an inside view of all that. So. Well, now we let's start talking now about the opportunities and and that you're talking about these type of environments and and you know uh, four year programs, you know the closest thing that they're going to get to actually professional football uh, is is a kind of what you're trying to say. This is professional football where effectively, if your grades aren't good enough, you can be gone in the second year. Yeah, so I think um, you know when we look at the data over here in the NCA, when you look at all sports in totality, whether it's football, American football, or basketball, or women's soccer or men's soccer, and um, the percentage of, of of kids in America that get to go into the pros is somewhere around five percent, two to five percent, is what they say. Um, so if you're a, a top level player who's trying to get to that next tier, um, but you're still not sure what you want to do. I mean, the foundation of any career opportunity, to me, education is power, right? And the fact that we we get to come away, um, you get a, a degree in your hand. Um, you know, with I grew up wanting a PE degree. Uh, I ended up getting a master's degree in exercise science. I wish I'd gone in and gotten an MBA in business um, because that was all I kind of thought I wanted to do growing up. Um, and, and there are degree programs that are transferable it used to be if you wanted to be a teacher, there was complications transferring a, a teaching certificate home and you had to do a transitional course. Um, but, you know, sky's the limit over here in terms of academics. And again, if you've got a particular area of academics that you're interested in, I would say do your homework on on the degree programs that are available at the, at the particular institution that you're talking to. But, you know, for me, it's it was at the time, it was close to being, in my mind, a professional and I got to get a degree out of it, which at the time, I don't know that I really understood how important or how powerful that would be for me. So you come away, you get to study, you get a great playing experience. But when I look back now, probably what was the intangible for me was my personal growth as a, as a person. I was very young and naive when I came away, to be very honest with you. Um, but I had been raised by a set of parents that I was terrified of getting in trouble and I had a good set of values that kept me grounded and kept me safe at all times i would say um so that was kind of my my guiding principle if you will was don't ever get in trouble uh it's okay to have fun it's study hard play hard and uh do your best on the field and you know i was very fortunate that i was able to achieve all that while i was at, in college i certainly had a lot of fun i'm not going to say i didn't um but to be able to walk away after four years and i think if you've got a, a player that's on the fringe looking for that next opportunity who isn't quite ready to make the transition into Arsenal, if you can get into the elite power five here, I mean, these are programs that are doing it, Alex, at a really, really high level for all intents and purposes, the resources and the day-to-day -day playing experience, the training environment, strength conditioning, nutrition, player data analysis. I mean, they have all the resources that the average club, I would suspect back home, just isn't quite there yet. And I think the ability to have a player come away mature, you get a degree, 
you go back home at 21 years of age when I mean, you've still got 12 13 14 playing years ahead of you so it's there's there's certainly pros and cons to it there's no doubt um but you know not everybody's going to get that automatic player pathway at 18 19 years of age in dublin so what's the alternative but, for them would be what i would say 